All righty, there we go. So just for my soul ministries, who are we? We are a discipleship ministry. Um, <laughs> we have been in business for three years. And I say business, and we're going to talk about that later. We have been here for three years. And I want to show you what opportunities you have with this discipleship ministry. What does that mean? That means we're growing in God. We're discipling, we're teaching, walking with others as they grow in their relationship with God. That is simply what we're doing. And you have these opportunities you see on your screen to grow in your relationship with God along with us. We have prayer moments every Wednesday, 5.30 a.m. and 9 p.m. Now, 5.30 a.m. is Facebook Live. So if you jump in there, uh, 5.30 with your coffee, your Bible, and your pad, we would love to have you. Both times we have the conference call line open, so there's multiple vehicles for you to be with us. So conference call line at 5.30 and 9, but at 5.30 we are also Facebook Live. We have monthly teaching sessions, our monthly teaching sessions. They are the second Saturday of every month the second Saturday of every month, 9.30 a.m. Next Saturday, please join us. We're going back to some fundamentals. We're going back to some basics. We're gonna talk about the what, the why, and the how of repentance. What is it? How do I do it? Why is it so important? Please be with us. Just a moment or just that, at any time, myself, or Minister Linda Hewlett will be on Facebook Live giving you just a moment, just two, three, maybe four minutes of something that is on our heart that is encouraging us. And we know that it will encourage someone else once it hit their ears, just a moment. Soul healing sessions. I am so excited. Our soul healing sessions, please stay alert and check our Facebook page our soul healing sessions will be the fourth Thursday of every month. So the first one will be May 27th, May 27th, soul healing sessions. The first 30 minutes of the soul healing session will be Facebook Live. We will actually give a 20 to 30 minute lesson um, on grief. What is it? I think our first session will be, what is it? The title of a grief. What's a, what is this thing about grief? Okay, just defining it, just looking at it from a biblical perspective. We will go offline after about 30 minutes of a general lesson and we will have a private Zoom meeting with six to eight people and we will have a soul healing session. We'll take the nuggets from that lesson and we will talk about it and give each other uh, give each other a platform to talk about the grief that they may be experiencing currently in their lives. Because we're going to get through this thing, but we will not get through it alone. We're not going to get. We're not even going to attempt to get through it alone. So our soul healing sessions, please, please join us May twenty seventh, seven p.m. But look for the flyer on Just For My Soul's page. We have it about half full. The private meeting now is about half full. Inbox me if you are interested in being a member of the Soul Healing Session. Of course, the beginning lesson and then the private Zoom meeting that follows directly after, okay? Testimony interviews. We are having our first today with my dear friend, Michelle Garcia and a fall book study. We just finished a book called Fervent in the fall of 2000, uh, 2020. And so 2021, we will be beginning the next book, fall book study in August. But I tell you, that Fervent book study was out of sight. Michelle was actually one of our panelists um, that journeyed through that book with us. And at the bottom of my screen, you have all of Just For My Soul Ministries information. Okay, you have all of our information. Any of those things that I previously spoke of were recorded. They were recorded. And you're able to see them on our YouTube channel, Just For My Soul, Cheryl, 
just for my soul, Oliver, or just for my soul, Cheryl Oliver. If you would put that information in your YouTube search, just for my soul ministries, YouTube page will come up. Click on playlist and you will have those categories I just mentioned and all the videos from the book study, all videos from previous prayer moments, all the videos from past teaching sessions. We want to make growing with God convenient at your fingertips. We are left with no excuse. And check out our website. All of those recordings are on the website. There is, there's any time, any place, any moment, privately with a group of people, click on a lesson, click on a prayer moment. Growth is, is this the season? It's a season for us to move and grow in our intimate personal relationships with God. So there you have our information, website, email, phone number, YouTube channel um, at your fingertips. Now I'm going to stop sharing this screen and we are going to get started. So we're just going to take a moment to say welcome to all of you. I see we have Raquel with us, Rose. Hi there to Neil, Wanda, Dorothy, Peggy, Tish, Sandra, Aura, Payne. Good morning. Good morning to you. All right. We're going to get going. So just for my soul, as I stated earlier, we were coming on. Now we have more individual with us. We are discipleship ministry, okay? Healing for the soul for everyone. We do that. We disciple four ways. Bible study, prayer, mentoring, and personal testimonies. When the ministry was developed, when the ministry was developed, and we got about God's business. That, that's the business we're in. When we got about God's business, those are the four pillars he gave me. And I wanna read two scriptures to you and the reason why personal testimonies will always be a part of our ministry, a part of our growing. Write this down, Psalms 19, 119, 119. Verse 71, and it reads, <laughs> it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes, that I may learn your statutes. I have another one. Revelations chapter 12, verse 11. And it reads, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And they did not love their selves to the death. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. We do this because our goal is for you all to have a platform to stand on and talk about the things of your life, the experience of your life where you met God, you overcame, you may not have seen his face if it wasn't for that experience. Something in that experience caused you to know him intimately know him in a different way. He was no longer mother's God. He was no longer grandmother's God. In that experience, he became your God. And many of those experiences, my brothers and sisters, they feel like afflictions. They feel like suffering. They feel like, am I gonna get through this? Because as long as we're comfortable, cool, collected, got everything we need, got the boo we need, and, and everything is just right, I'm sorry. We don't call on him. We're not built that way. We become self-sufficient. We become prideful. We become um, dependent upon ourselves because we feel like we are where we are because of who we are. And that's just human nature. 
and anybody have a different view on it, just let me know. But you're not going to call on him until you need him. You're not going to call on him until you're desperate. You're not going to call and depend on him and get to know him until you hurt. So like a good father does, he knows exactly what to assign to what child. What Michelle went through is different than I went through. But what we went through got us to the same place. That's the yeah. goal. My experience is not your experience. Y you all listening may not have Michelle's experience, but you're going to have an experience in this life and in this world because it's all fallen. It's all been touched. We, we, we all off. This whole walk is not intended according to God's prescription because of a little word called sin. So we are here to hear God through Michelle's experience with him, to hear how she came to know him and now who he is to her, what he's done in her life and, and who she's become because of it. Because one thing I did do know, he did not let her fall. He kept her every step of the way. I've been knowing Michelle, I think we talked um, earlier this week for about 11 years. Yes. We met in counseling, um, quickly learned. I quickly learned that a lot of counseling session sessions had to do with actually people needing to be discipled, grow, somebody to walk with them through their season. And it's really the, the prefaces of why this ministry began. We don't do this alone and we have to grow in God to survive. Babies, even, even in, the, in the natural realm, babies gotta have parents. Babies can't do it on their own, they have to grow up. And so we went on a growth journey. We went on a growth journey, quickly became friends. But oh my God, we sit back now and we shout about victories. Yes, we do. We sit mm -hmm. back and we got more to come. <laughs> this video is not about this session is not about arriving it's about oh. surviving we don't know what tomorrow holds but we have learned who knows tomorrow in his hands yes. and so that's why i yes. rejoice today to look at my sister from where she's come god keeping even this relationship for a moment such as this so yes. Let us get going. That's enough of who we are. That's enough of my mouth. As you can probably see by the smile on my face, I'm about to come unglued. <laughs> that is all right. That is so all right. That is so all right. Um, so my sister, my love, my sweetheart, um, say, say to the people, say to the people how you would like to introduce yourself. Well, thank you, um, Reverend Oliver. <laughs> for inviting me to do this. Yeah. Um, it, it means a lot to me that I am able to share my experiences, not just with everyone, but I... mm -hmm. good or the bad. And so I am grateful. Um, I can't see who all is, you know, is logged on with us, but I feel like everybody who's logged on has to know I'm Michelle Garcia. I am, when Reverend Alva asked me to do this, she said, well, you're going to introduce yourself. Um, introduce yourself to people. And I'm, whenever people ask me that, I have to sit and think, okay, how do I introduce myself to people? You know, I know who I was mm. and I know who I am. And I, and I, I wrote a list and I said, well, I'm Michelle. When I started this life in the beginning, you know, daughter, yeah. sister, granddaughter, cousin, friend. And throughout life's journeys, I realized that the transition came. I was those things, but then I became a wife, a mom, you know, you know, full-time mom, full-time wife. Mm -hmm. And as the seasons went on, when I look back on it now, as my seasons changed, my title changed. Yes. I was no longer, you know, um, 
just the sister and the daughter. And I was then an ex-wife. Mm. I was then a single mom. Mm. I was then an unemployed single mom. You know, um, and as things went on, I started becoming angry mm. because I felt like I was raised and born in a foundation of spirituality. Mm. But throughout this journey, at the age that I am right now, I know people like to say I was today old when I realized I was, you know, I, the older I got, I started realizing, wait a minute, mm. all of these things that are happening to me. Soon as something happened, I called, oh, God, help me. Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, how could you do this? But I didn't realize that I was riding on the wings of prayers of my ancestors mm. and their relationship with God, not mine. Yeah. Not my own. So I, I'm staying here today to say I'm Michelle Garcia, first and foremost, saved by grace. Mm -hmm. I'm um, a warrior in the God's army. Yeah. And I'm still a single mom. I'm still an ex-wife. I'm still somebody who used to lie. I'm still, I'm still those things, but I'm saved by grace. My God. And I will tell you, Reverend Oliver, I never saw me here mm -hmm. when I was in the midst of all the turmoil that life was giving me. Let me ask you a question, Michelle, in, in our discussion um, for the viewers. You and I know, mm -hmm. but you put in a, um, just, I want you to encapsulate when you say, the Michelle I am now, this Michelle that survived, mm -hmm. give us almost like a grocery list. Because I, I talked about an 11 year span that just mm -hmm. I've been in your life, okay? Yes. I've been honored to walk with Michelle, journey, mm -hmm. laugh, cry, pray, scream, get angry, come back to prayer, read scripture up in the middle of the night, going on fast. That's just been 11 years. Mm -hmm. So that they understand those who don't know you, those who mm -hmm. are not a friend of yours, give us almost a grocery list of what you've survived. So they can really put in perspective what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Just give us a grocery list of what you would want us to know. What did you survive? What have you survived? Well, I can tell you, um, starting as um, far back as 20, 2010, is when I, I want to say things started to unravel. I um, experienced my father, you know, e uh, Easter Sunday 2010, having a, a massive stroke. Okay. Um, then uh, two weeks later, my husband at the time being diagnosed with heart issues, and two weeks later, he had to have open heart surgery. Okay. And three weeks after that, having to have open heart surgery again. Okay. Things never were the same. Then I, I lost my uncle moving forward. Okay. A year later, I lost the marriage that I'd been in for 20 years. Okay. Then I lost my home and everything that I had worked for due to that divorce. Okay. Moving forward after that, I lost my job because the company had shut down. Okay. Now, then I really started getting close to God. And I thought, he's going to take care of me. He's going to take care of me. Not knowing he was taking care of me. Years come up, I, my health, I almost lost my life. That's right. Um, not knowing that I was ill until they got me in the ER and they said, I, we can't get a pulse. We can't get these things. Mm -hmm. So then as the years progressed in a year's time, as a matter of fact, it was uh, 2019, Mm -hmm. I was blessed to have met someone I thought who was going to be my life partner walking forward. Okay. Um, my dad was diagnosed with cancer that January. Okay. And um, Ron was diagnosed with cancer three months later. Mm -hmm. um, and moving forward after that in April, I lost Ron. He died suddenly. Okay. Um, so after being single, what, 10, 10 years, 11 years, okay. um, finally bringing someone, he dies. Then a week and a half later, my brother-in-law dies. Okay. Then we have six months later, seven months later, mm -hmm. I lost my mom suddenly. Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Five days after that, her mom dies. Okay. Four months after that, my my aunt, who I'm very close to, Sharon, lost her husband. Yes. And I want to say a week after that, I lost my grandfather. Okay. And the reason I asked Michelle mm -hmm. to put um, what she wanted us to know, mm -hmm. because our lives are full of things we've survived, whether you give God credit or not. Mm -hmm. I wanted her to, to laundry list that for us right quick so that you understand who's talking to you. You understand the brevity of when she's been through it, but most of all, you will also understand because grief has a way to make you feel all alone. Nobody's going through this but me, okay? Michelle and I, Michelle, I remember those conversations he was like, mom, can't nobody be, you know, is it just me? Is it just me? Um, mm -hmm. Your mind has a way of doing that to you. So this is my um, opportunity to allow shit, Michelle to bring you into the things that she's had to survive, the things she's had to overcome, the stuff she's been hit with, blindsided with from the right, the left, the north, the south, the east, the west. And in the midst of all of those things she's just named, in about a 12 year span, maybe 13 year span, she still had to raise kids. She still had to pay bills. She still had to get up and put on clothes and go to work. She still had to somehow seem sane to the folks that she was working with, living with, and those of us she was friends with so we wouldn't lock her up and put no straight jacket on her. So she laundry listed for you, but let's not get it twisted. All of us have to do life in between. Mm -hmm. And I was, I mean, honored to be only at a, 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 a maybe half of those situations to grab her hand and say, okay, sister, we're going to fight. You can't pray right now, but I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to yes. pray with you. And a lot of times it was not just Michelle. She had to bring those two boys she was raising into the fold. Mm -hmm. You mm. grab, you grab the right hand, you grab the left hand. We're going to hold her up together. So a lot of us, um, if Michelle would just give me permission here, a lot of us want our kids to know God. Yes. And I remember the first time we sat down the very first meeting and I had no idea all of these other things would happen 10 years down the line. I said to her, your children will be fine. We want to protect them from everything. But because they watch their mom, they watch this little crazy preacher come in from time to time and, and, and pray and slap all on her and, and, and holler. And sometimes we said a few other words to each other. <laughs> um, them some praying young men. They're men now. They were eight, yes. nine at the time. They praying young men. They yes. are survivors. They yes. are go-getters because it wasn't all fluffy. It wasn't all beautiful. It wasn't all storybook. It wasn't all perfect. And, and I, I see them now and I just start grinning. And we have a group of sisters. We all keep our children covered. But I see them now and I start grinning. And I did not want to leave out the reality of what Michelle just said to us by filling in the blanks of life raising children, cars breaking down, having to move, got to go to work, making groceries. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. So Michelle, the next question I have for you, um, because in the title you said, I say, I said, babe, what is it that you want to say? You said life on the other side. I want people to know they will make it life on the other side that you can live, you can breathe, you can, you can be restored. So my next question, Michelle, is this. When you didn't know that there was life on the other side, when you didn't know that you could breathe again, mm -hmm. when you didn't know that you would have that beautiful smile on your face, because mm -hmm. tomorrow just looks like, I don't know yes. what's going to happen. Talk to us transparently about what was your relationship with God 
how, how, like, what did you do? What did you do to make it? What did you learn about him in making it? What habits that you had to grow and gain to hold on to um, in your relationship with God? Because you knew you had to gain strength. You knew you had to gain depth. You knew mm -hmm. you had to gain, you knew you needed him to hold on, but talk mm -hmm. to people who may be very basic in that understanding. Mm -hmm. Well, Reverend Lala, I'm gonna tell you that um, I did not, I was raised in a Pente Pentecostal church. So it's not that I didn't know him, but I knew him through the eyes of my grandparents, my mother, my aunts, and um, I was bad. Come on. I I mean, that's real. I mean, you know, my mama prayed all the time. My grandmother prayed all the time. And and I'm not out robbing, stealing, killing, you know, doing all these things. Um, when, when I was married, my house was full of people. We're always laughing. We're always having a good time. I get divorced. I, I finally decided to leave an abusive relationship that was emotionally abusive to save my sons. And you just going to let me suffer like this, God? I mean, that's real, yeah. you know? I mean, I went from being a stay-at-home mom, leaving with nothing to, to, to still support my sons. And the more I lost, the lower I got. And when I say lower, yes, I thought about suicide. Yes, I thought about, I'm gonna just walk away from all of this. Yes, if I just kill my babies and myself, we don't have to worry about it. Yes, I thought about those things. Come on. But the lower I got, something died in me. Mm. Now, I felt it and I fought it because I loved who I was. You know, I was the turn up at the party with the good time. And, you know, and we, I liked that person because I love laughing and, and, and smiling. But I kept hearing God say, okay, you, and you still ain't getting it. Mm. And the more he tried to give it to me, the more I was fighting it, slapping it out the way, slapping it out the way. My biggest fear my entire life was being alone. I don't want to die alone. I don't want to be alone. I like being around people. He slowly started taking people from me, not dead. He slowly started, oh, she's going through a divorce. We really don't want to deal with that. Yeah, I know you were there for me, but we really don't want to. So I started like, hey, grasping at things. I needed it, but wait a minute, let's go out, but wait a minute, let's, and those people were no longer there. And my focus changed because I had to be, most important to me were my sons. They didn't ask to come into this world and they sure didn't ask for the world to be all turned upside down. This was two grown people's decision. Yeah. And I will never forget those people, you know, if I got anybody online from Katie, hey, it was the Tigers. But we lived, I moved on Avenue A. Yeah. And one night, this is when I had lost my job. And I went, I'm done, God. I can't do this no more. Mm -hmm. I'm done. I'm through fighting. I'm through being upset. And I said it with conviction and anger. Mm -hmm. Do what you want to do. <laughs> do what you want to do. Whatever you want to do to me, fine. Fine. Because clearly what I want don't matter. Mm -hmm. I will never forget that night, Cheryl. Yeah. I had not slept in months. Yeah. When I closed my eyes that night, mm -hmm. there was a vision of an angel praying through my room. Mm -hmm. And he, that angel because in my, in my sleep, the angel I felt was going from room to room. Somewhere in the middle of the night when I woke up the next morning, one said, Mom, why, why did you get up last night and put oil on our forehead and pray over us? I said, I, he said, Jose said, yeah, I, I, I felt you coming to my room too. And he said, I looked up and I went, okay, mm -hmm. I'm ready, I'm yours. Mm -hmm. I will do inside of me what you want so that I'm able to tell another woman, young lady, 
man, whoever. This is not an easy journey. My God. But if you walk with him and walk the way he wants us to walk, you will survive this. So this year, I'm, I'm only able to talk to you this morning <laughs> because of what happened 10 years ago. Hmm. So there was a moment, what I'm hearing and what you just spoke, there was a moment of surrender. Yes. Okay. There was a moment of surrender. So your life being shifted from being comfortable, um, you knew what to expect. Yes. You knew bills were going to be paid. Yes. You grew up in the church. So you, you, you felt like not necessarily invincible, but because I know God, he's going to keep me from all of this. Yeah, because that's the world, you know? That's what we, we dream of. We dream right. of getting married right. and paying bills and having kids and the picket fence and, you know, and going to the game. We, that's that's what That was my dream. All right, all right. This wasn't my dream. Mm. So there was Nobody a moment. Dream. I'm there sorry. Was a moment of, no, no, no. There was, so there was a moment when your dream, there was a yes. moment when the life you had constructed, but you knew you had to get out of that situation because yes. of emotional abuse. Yes, yes. So you hit this wall because things were shifting. Mm -hmm. You hit a wall. And that night you're speaking of, it was truly your soul just surrendering because you couldn't keep it all together anymore. So no. surrender, what was... And I mean, tangibly, like somebody who doesn't know, mm -hmm. what would you tell somebody after you surrendered? I don't know what to expect. I don't have anything. Da, 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 da. I'm yours. After you surrendered, what was the next thing you had to learn in God to survive? What was the next thing you had to do in God to grow? Because part of surrendering is letting go of your way and picking up his way. So, mm -hmm. so just what is the next thing that Michelle had to do, had to learn to survive and be stable? When, when you say surrender and, you know, I'm sure you can testify to this, uh, Reverend Oliver, I'm very stubborn. Mm -hmm. And I learned the word surrender because on a regular basis, you would say, you, you, ain't, you ain't completely let it go. You ain't completely let it go. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. I had to realize surrender living for god being okay with where you are mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean things gonna be perfect see I, I had to get that in my mind i you know you figure oh you know we they talk about you know when you get to heaven streets of gold blah 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 blah, blah. i think they tell us that because here on earth that's tangible that's something we can relate to you can't relate to something that you can't see physically, unless it's in your soul. I had to realize that that walk wasn't about to be easy. Yeah. And I had to understand, I have to trust and believe that he, every decision he makes on my behalf, it's not what I want, it's what I need. Oh. It's what I need. Now, that's easy to say, but that comes with a lot of prayer, oh. um, a lot of reading, mm -hmm. a lot of understanding, mm -hmm. um, not just uh, a huge church family. Mm -hmm. We're talking about you can go to a mega church of thousands and thousands of people, but um, really that one mama that's in the church that was praying for you and lay hands on you, no matter what, it took the prayers of people who knew me and the ones that didn't. God, keep her up, keep her going. Mm. I, I speak of losing my mother and my grandmother in the same week. That doesn't happen to everybody. Mm. But those women imparted that strength in me and not just a physical strength, the strength of God. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how to have faith. Let me tell you where to go find them. Let me tell you mm, when you can't, when you're not able to pray because you don't have the words, just say, yes, I surrender all. I can't give you 
what my spirit feels because everybody else's spirit and what they feel is different. But I can tell you, his light shines bright through me in the midst of devastation. I know he's real, Cheryl. Yes, yes, yes. The biggest and the hardest words to this day that I have to say is let your will be done. Mm -hmm. Woo! Because when his will is done, you're like, I know I ain't going to be something I want. Gosh darn it. That's a real talk. But your will is what's right for you. If you my daddy, mm -hmm. you want to love your child. I, I don't get it right. I, I still don't get it right now. But I allow myself to be open to hear him. I'm, I'm not telling you I'm praying 24 hours a day, but I allow my spirit to be full. And that is the hardest thing. It took me, realistically, you know it took me 10 years to get here. It took a whole pandemic. But that's how stubborn I am. It, it took the world to shut down. It took me losing things that I, I loved to be able to go on Facebook mm. and say, y'all, he's real and he'll do it for you. Mm. There are people who are depressed. There are not even in my circle. I, I know what depression is. And, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh, all you need is God. All you need is the word. No, I think he provides many outlets for us, but he wants to be our foundation. Mm -hmm. He wants us to stand on him and grow. I have some friends who don't call me and say, I just know you've been through so much. I just don't want, girl, for real. Let me tell you, let me tell you how I got over. But let me tell you. Many midnight, many sleepless nights. And I know I can't speak for everybody else, but he loves me and he's sweeter to me in the middle of the night. Sometimes I just have to tell him, well, oh, please can I sleep tonight? Because he gives it to us when we are at peace. Mm -hmm. Reverend Otto, I can't. I think back on them years where I really wasn't this close to him. Yeah. I, I don't, it's it's almost like a dream because you I can't imagine. I can't imagine me being here. Yeah. I'm able to love somebody else. I'm able to pour into somebody else. I'm able to tell you the, you know, the friends that are close to me to know Michelle will say anything. No, y'all, I still say anything. We joke because I say, yeah, I'm saved by grace, you know, but I'm from the south side of the hood. I'm going to still tell you this is how it is. Mm -hmm. But I still know that he covers me. He covers me. And he made it possible for me to raise two genuinely wonderful young men. Y'all out there, if you if you allow him into your heart, he's going to honor your steps and he's going to put you in situations that you thought you'd never be, MD Anderson. He, he will put people in your life that will help you get to where he needs you to be. Cheryl Oliver, mm. that's real. Mm. It's a lot that you know, I, I felt, oh, oh, Reverend Oliver, I'm embarrassed if I get on and I tell them I've done this, this, and that. Anything you can think of, I've done. Now, I can tell you anything so you can think of what you want, but <laughs> I am not, I was not se secure in who I was after my marriage. I was ashamed. Come on, baby. I felt I was a failure. I kept telling Reverend Allen, Reverend Allen, I'm embarrassed. Look, I mean, 
you know, not, not stay in any church, but certain churches, you know, when you're divorced, they, they look down on you. You can't be a part of things. So the walk with God isn't easy. And he didn't say, this is going to be easy. He just says, I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. Mm. And that's what we have to get. That's, that's where we have to get. I get up every morning mad because my mama gone. I get up every morning mad because Ron is gone, my grandmother. And that lasts for a little bit because then he'll say, oh, okay, you mad because your mama gone? And Ron and your grandmother? I gave my son for your sin. So why not? So why not? So here I am with a smile on my face and tears roll down my cheek for the love and the grace and the mercy he showed me because I could have been so many other places. And I thank him for it. Mm. And I thank him for the people who he allowed to come into my life. And for me yeah. to be able to share part of my story with you. Um, you all may be out there and looking, it's like, why this crazy lady just grinning, showing all of her teeth? It is, it is like um, sitting here listening to Michelle. It's like somebody's given me a gift. Somebody has given me a huge present. Um, I saw, and I don't even know if she wore white on purpose, but I saw Michelle in my spiritual mind today, 10 years ago when I met her. Okay, I want you to catch that. I saw Michelle today 10 years ago, when I met her, I saw what you see today because I saw Michelle through God's eyes, not church eyes, not judgmental eyes, not arrogant eyes, not selfish eyes, not um, insecure eyes. I saw her through God's eyes and I remember smiling like this in our first counseling session. And afterwards I said, Cheryl, you got to control that grin on your face because people are going to think something is wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Because I was, I, I just said, if we get there, if we get there, I'm going to hear in my ears. Well, I'm going to say this. I didn't know if I would hear because sometimes relationships part. So it's a blessing that God has allowed us to not only salvage the relationship, but be here today so that I can hear what she's saying now, because I heard it 10 years ago when I laid eyes on her. So that's why I have a smile on my face. Many people are in the position I am to grab somebody's hands and walk with them. And I'll say this, um, you don't have the luxury to, um, let, me, let, me, let me rephrase, because sometimes God does tell you to let go. He didn't tell me to let go of this one. You don't have the luxury to choose the journeys. You don't have the luxury to choose the journeys. Michelle will call me and say, I, I, it's, it's you know different times of the night or whatever. I know you got a family. I know you're tired. I know this, I know this. I didn't, and I would say to her, Michelle, don't worry about that. I don't choose who God sends for me to walk with and survive. I got you. Come on, let's go. And I had to preface that because sometimes God will tell you to let people go, but not this one. So I'm honored. I'm amazed. And not only that, 
I don't get the two, three, four, five o'clock phone calls. We got to pray for three days straight. Let's fast. Let me talk to you. That stopped years ago. We've been knowing each other for about 11 years. That stopped years ago. Let me tell you something in a different uh, voice than Michelle's as she gave her testimony. Because we prayed when we first met, because we read, we went to church, we stayed up, we looked at the word, we had Bible study, we fasted. He was making deposits in Michelle and strengthening Michelle. So let me tell you, that latter part of her testimony, when she had those five or six deaths, when she had to move for the fifth or sixth time, the phone calls were very minimal because she had grew strength. She had grown courage and she had walked with him through so much already. She knew he was going to keep her and bring her through. There were times we still prayed. There were times we still talked. There were times we still cried. But by then, Michelle was eating steak. She wasn't drinking milk. She had grown to a place. She said, Reverend Oliver, I, I, I pray myself through the night. <laughs> I thank the Lord I wasn't driving because I left on the steering wheel and did like Because, <laughs> baby, I was asleep for eight hours. Thank you, Jesus. Number one. Number one. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I prayed myself through the night. <laughs> I laid hands on myself, Reverend Oliver. I said, oh my God. So it's almost like a sister, like a parent, like a, 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 a co-intercessor warrior, because don't get it twisted. She's prayed me through some things. She's encouraged me as well through some things. The relationship goes two ways, but I had to explain the smile on my face. We haven't reached any, any, any goal. We have not ended the journey. You're looking at two ladies uh, in their early 50s and don't know how much more we got. May not be as much as we've already had, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. whatever we got ahead of us, We've gotten some ammunition on how to walk that walk. So I just had to just explain this grin on my face because um, I love Michelle. I love her boys. I love her family. And so before we close this out, sweetheart, is there anything else in your heart, anything else in your spirit um, that you want to share at this time? I know that there will be a time coming, you will be sharing a lot. Mm. But for this little moment in time, baby girl, is there anything else you want to encourage all of the listener souls with? I, I, again, I wanna tell you, thank you so much, Reverend Long, for this opportunity. Um, and I need, I just want them to understand, I think that if we get in our head that it's a lot of what we go through is embedded from different situations we've been in. And once I realized they rejected Jesus, I started to move. You can overcome any obstacle, but you gotta have him in your life. <sighs> You gotta, you gotta do it because if not, especially in the times we're in right now, in the time depression, suicide, your sense of loss is so great right now. Reach out. I don't even care if you reach out to me. Reach out. Reach out to anybody for that support. Yes. And for those of us who who may be blessed enough to have somebody reach out to, to us, remember, don't use it for gospel. Yes. Don't use it as a, to weaponize something from that person mm -hmm. because you don't know how God will use you and you don't have to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost for God to use you. 
So I want to encourage you. I want to let you know there is life on the other side of drama mm -hmm. and turmoil. He never said the road would be easy. He just said, I will walk with you through it. So thank you, Reverend Oliver. I appreciate it. You are welcome. You are so welcome. You are so welcome. Um, we have many, many, many more testimony interviews to come. Um, this part of God's grace and this part of God's glory has to have a platform. Just for my soul ministries is positioned to give him that platform. You may have a story, you may not know me, but the stories that I will be bringing will be individuals that I've walked with. If you're interested in sharing your story, get in touch with me. We got to talk. We got to talk. Um, but you have many more coming because our goal, our goal, sweet souls, is for you to know him, know the power of his resurrection, for you to grow stronger in your walk with him so that you could look and sound like my friend this morning, that there is life on the other side, there's strength, there is power. You will go through things. This is a fallen world. Mm -hmm. You will go through things. Um, somebody will be interviewing me that I may give you my story. But here is what also I want you to keep in mind. I sacrificed honor dishonored, so honored to walk with Michelle. Michelle is now empowered to do the same for somebody else. Do you see the domino effect? So if, if, if I hadn't gone, anything, gone through anything, if I wasn't mature enough in my word, when Michelle came to me, I'd have had nothing for her. My life together, girl, gone. Yes. I say my little name, yes. now I lay me down to sleep. My friends <laughs> covered me, I'm good. No, no. Because when I looked in her eyes, I knew she would survive and I took that journey with her. Now Michelle is taking and have taken, because like she said, he's not gonna wait for you to be all the way processed. She's taking journeys with people. She's taking journeys with people now and she got a hoard of people to journey with. That's the discipleship. That's the mm -hmm. mentoring. That's the walking yes. with. That's the teaching. That's Christ being duplicated on earth. Right in the midst of our hell. Yes. That's what we want to produce. That's what we want to duplicate. And so I will be bringing you more stories, more testimonies, so you can gain strength. You can gain faith. We defeat the enemy by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. You can overcome suicide. You can overcome depression. Why? Because you heard somebody else made it. You yes. heard somebody else survived. Yes. You heard somebody else got strength from a source that they didn't expect it from because they didn't know it. Okay? That's our goal. So you look forward. These are not on a calendar rotation. These are as we decide to meet people and people decide to share. Because your story, your story is not just for you. Your story is God's glory. Okay? This isn't about my strength or Michelle's strength. This is about his wonderful being. Yes. This is all about him. This is all about him. So, you just have to just stay tuned for the flyer because they're going to come as God gives. This is the first of JMS, Just For My Soul Ministries, testimony interview. I pray that you were blessed. God knows I was. And before we end, we want to end in prayer and we want to end with an invitation. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Yes. First of all, God, we just want to thank you. thank you. We just want to thank you. We tried our best right under an hour, but God knows 
me and this beautiful soul, Michelle Garcia, Lord knows we could talk for days about the goodness that we've seen you do in her life, in my life, in lives of others. So Father, right now, we just say thank you. We thank you for where we come from. We thank you, God, for where we're going. Father, we just thank you. There were days we doubted, days we got angry, days we didn't understand, days we didn't, we were frustrated, days we might not even believe to tell the truth. Yes, Lord. Thank you. But in it all, we shook, but you stayed the same. Thank you, Lord. And you carried us, you kept us, we kept pushing, pushing. you never forsook us, God. Thank you, Jesus. And every time we reached to grab you, you were there. You were right there, God. You were right there. Every time we reached out, we got exactly what we needed for the moment we needed you in. So, Father, we say thank you. It's not about it being easy, but it's showing up. It's about us surviving and learning who you are. Thank you, Lord. So whatever my sweet sister had to go through to get here, to God be the glory. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Thank you. In Jesus' name. And for those of you who may want to know this God, for those of you who don't understand who He is, but you feel something in the side of you that wants to know Him, you recognize that your life is not on track. You recognize that you may not even all the way believe. You recognize that you are sinful within yourself that you're not living right. If you're feeling that now and you desire to surrender your life with God, I'm gonna keep my eyes open. You simply say this prayer with us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. I know that I need you. I know that I am not my own God. Yes, Jesus. I believe that there's a God. I believe his son died for my sins. Mm. Your love allowed somebody else to pay my price. I believe that. So Father, now I surrender and I ask you to come into my life for free. Help me to continue to surrender to you, God. Yes, Lord. Help me to know you. I believe your son died in my place, God. I'm welcoming you into my life, my affairs, my thinking, my words. I'm inviting you into my soul. And I'm asking you, Father, to have your way Mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. If you pray that prayer with faith and belief. Yes, yes. You are saved. Your next step now is to go on the journey of growing so you don't struggle with your salvation. Now you have to grow. And that's what JMS is. We're a discipleship ministry. We'll help you grow, but you also have need of a church home. If you inbox us, text me, call me or whatever, I have many, many of my brothers in the ministry that are pastors that have sound, biblical bible teaching churches that will love on you that will help you grow um along with jms and 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 welcome you into their church family i can refer you to a church but your next step is to grow your next step is to get power and strength your next step so to god be the glory so we are going to end and I want to say thank you. I must just see here, Lee Ann. Yes, good morning. Oh my God, Lori. Good morning, Lynn, Shannon, Tanil, Tina, Jennifer. Good morning to you, Miss Aura Payne. I know there's probably many others watching that may not be commenting. Um, yes, Elisa, if I'm saying that right. Good morning to you all. So I pray that you have been blessed. We have been right at one hour. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, my friend. I love you. Y'all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay dry, and we will be back with you soon. Bye-bye for now.